Peter Swan always amazes me. He always seems to look so cool, so casual. But that went like a bullet from his left foot. And on the display of today, there's no reason why not. Swan, has he put it in? Taylor has. 4-1. So, in the last minute, Bob Taylor makes it 4-1 for Leeds United. Lady Luck was still deserting Royals when Leeds took the points through John Sheridan. Referee Paul Danson ruling that Michael Jilks had handled. The game between Leeds United and Huddersfield attracted over 20,000. Leeds came out on top 3-0 and our man at Ellen Road was Nick Powell. You had to be confident about your Christmas shopping to be in the crowd here. You had to be tough to be on the pitch. Andy May was booked for that. Looking for all the world like 11 checkered flags, it was Huddersfield who had the early chances. Banks' free kick over the top. But the game was a bit flat and the referee decided after just 20 minutes the ball was two. And the change of ball brought a change of fortune for Leeds United. Within 30 seconds, a second goal in successive games for John Sheridan. Brightening up what was otherwise a pretty dull afternoon. A rare flash of skill came from one of the stewards. Sign him up, sign him up, sang the crowd, and they had a point. Plenty for Malcolm McDonald to complain about at half-time. But in the second half, a tedious wait before Sheridan, Taylor, Davison, and finally Sheridan again produced the second goal for Leeds from the best move of the match. And it was Davison who was to show why Leeds had paid £350,000 for him. Williams cross from the right wing. Davison's firm header for his third goal in five games since arriving from Derby. Well, this ball to Barani is playing right at the moment. And now Leeds on the break with Snowden. That's a good ball by Snowden. Davison. City. I'm sure the shot wasn't going to go in. But Bobby Davison gives Leeds the lead on 28 minutes. He brought down the inside left position. Snowden, the dummy by Swan, and a great goal by David Batty. The ball came in from the left, the Leeds player dummied, and David Batty into the bottom corner of the net, and Leeds look to have taken all three points the goal coming just 
seven minutes from the end, in the 83rd minute. And the Leeds United supporters doing their club proud. Aspen. Davison! Yes! What a beauty! Oh, didn't he knock that one in? Neil Aspen bundled his way through. It hit not his best leg, but it went through. But what finishing by Bobby Davison! That went like a guided missile. 1 0. Aspen, Sheridan, Davison. Yes, Peter Swan! Oh, and a lovely goal! Peter Swan nipped in and gets another important goal for Leeds United. Whoa, well, whether Peter Swan was listening to me or what, I don't know. But he nipped in there. And surely that sealed it for Leeds now. Been queuing since half past ten for a three o'clock kickoff. By 2.15, this was the scene. But these people never saw the game. The gates were already being closed. If you didn't have a ticket, you could go home. The lucky ones joined a crowd of 36,000. Yorkshire's biggest of the season. Also, the second division's biggest. The fifth minute, the midfield battle between Bradford's flame-haired Stuart McCall and Leeds youngster David Batty was always going to be important. The outcome here and Snowden's shot, a warning to Bradford. It went unheeded. In the twelfth minute, Snowden's cross and Williams, all five foot nine of him, got round the defence. His first league goal. Leeds were just worth their lead and young Batty almost increased it. But Bradford did have their chances to stop their slide down the table. They appealed in vain for a penalty when Williams clearly handled Goddard's cross, probably just outside the box. The incident did nothing to lessen the tension. But the Sheffield referee, Keith Hackett, always keen to let the game flow, got through the afternoon without booking anyone, not even when Sheridan appeared to want to restyle Abbott's hair. The half-time entertainment dropped out of the sky, and there was more flying, of a sort, after the break. Sheridan shot Tomlinson's acrobatics. Bradford, short of ideas and firepower up front, never forced Mervyn Day to a serious save. Leeds defender Ashurst came as close as anyone over his own bar. Then Williams, who'd scored the first goal, turned supplier, and Snowden, who made the first, settled the issue from Davison's header. Leeds 2, Bradford 0 scoring his eighth goal of the season. Hull's second biggest crowd of the season enjoyed their team's performance, a double over Leeds.
but uh, an equally bad one from the central defender from Rickwich Town. Cross coming in, Pearson! John Pearson, what a lovely goal! Oh, he went in where he hurt then. So, John Pearson marks his return with what can only be described as a hospital goal. A lovely cross from Glenn Snowden, but John Pearson there in camera. They had an ace night. There they are. Look Charlo's still looking for a free fag. Look at him. <laughs> I'll tell you what. That's... You'll not get one off me, Bobby. That's for oh, sure. No. Ian Rush there coming on. And Michel Platini. What, what a boost that must have been, Jim, yeah. to get Platini to play. That's great. And Serea, the great skipper oh, of... Uh, some player, Serea, isn't it? Inter Milan. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and Juventus. Well, and Juventus, it, yeah. of course. He was... He's skipper of Juventus. Ian and Rush nice linking up with too, Kenny Dalglish there, Jim. You know, they've only been away for a couple of seasons. There you are. Yeah, well, I, mean, I, wonder, I bet he's wondered what hit him, didn't you? I'm playing in this game. Look, he's got a bit of freedom. He's playing with Kenny Dalglish. I bet he wishes Michel Platini was still at Juventus with balls like that. Beautiful, man. Eh? And as you rightly say, and he likes to score goals against Everton, yes. doesn't he? Oh, he's always and, scoring goals yeah, against Everton. Yeah, the ball. He might have been a little bit nicky offside there, but uh -huh. since it's a testimonial, uh -huh. you know. Now, after the match, John Helm uh, was asking Russia about the rumours linking him with Glasgow Rangers, Jim, and possibly mm. the first Catholic ever to sign for the mm. club. Adams now telegraphed that one, and it lets in Simon Garner, but what a tackle by Haddock. That was a crucial tackle, a lovely one. Taylor's onside! He's around, Jenner! Oh, that's a penalty, surely! Yes, it is! So can John Sheridan keep his cool and put Leeds into the lead. We shall see. Yes, he can. The lead supporters, that is. Pearson. Snowden. Oh, it just went a fraction too far, but it's in now. It must be number two. Yes. Oh, what a gift. 45. Snowden put Leeds United two goals in the lead, but that was gifted by the Blackburn defence. But Snowden, who's run around like a little jackrabbit, there he is, lifts in between. He kept his goal 2-0. Sheridan gets a present there from the keeper. Baird, now then, can Ian Baird get the goal he's looking for? Yes, he can! Ian Baird done it! 1-0, and there's the man who's brought Leeds back from the dead. Does make no mistake, they were looking a beaten side, but it had to be a Plymouth mistake that presented him with his chance. But the number nine, back from Portsmouth after nine months away, comes back and did it in style. Their first goal was a simple 1-2. Pearson flicking on for Swan to score. He didn't have to wait long for his reward, however, thanks to a carbon copy of the first goal. Leeds got off to an excellent start, with Peter Swan eventually taking advantage of an easy chance here after confusion in the penalty area. I must say, Ian Baird had a great game for Leeds early on. A lovely cross coming up here, very unselfish. We won't name the guy who missed it. But in the first half at least, Sheffield United looked quite useful. Dave saved well there, another chance went begging, and this was a rather weak effort on the edge of the penalty area. Now the controversial moment of the first half coming up now. The ball's headed out. Was Azerwood, the Leeds number four, elbowed there? Well, the referee thought he was, and in my opinion, that was the right decision. Despite that fair up, he was booked. But this looked wrong to me. Downs was eventually sent off for this incident, but can you honestly see a foul there?